the right person to direct Jurassic World. And action! He was completely enthusiastic as a filmmaker and as a fan, but also he had a story to tell. Congratulations, here we go again, right? Yeah. So tell me, how does one get in the Jurassic World business? How'd you get the gig? Uh, I got a phone call, I didn't seek it out. I was, uh, I was gonna do another film, uh, and I got a call from Frank Marshall to come in and talk to Steven Spielberg about why we should uh, make another Jurassic Park movie, and that's, that's a good question. Like, why do we need another Jurassic Park movie? And so we thought about that for a while, and, uh, and we, we built this thing that, that you're looking at now, two years later. Really? So. How did you figure, how did you figure it out? How did you put everything together to make the sale that this absolutely had to happen? Well, we looked at the last 22 years since the first movie and asked ourselves, you know, what is what has changed? And something that I saw is that, you know, we have remade our mistakes uh, time and time again, and we've done it if there's money on the table. Uh, and I felt like this could be a movie that that looks uh, not just at the dangers of playing God, which we've seen already, but at, at excess and, and at, at how the dehumanization that the, the quest for profit will also bring. And so we, you know, we made a new dinosaur to, to make a lot of money, and, and it eats everything in its path. How's the process changed since the original to now in bringing the dinosaurs to life? Because that's the key sell yeah. when you're watching a Jurassic movie. You like the dinosaurs have to be realistic. Yeah. They have to look better than they did before and they still have to provide those thrills and chills and look terrifying and look like they could actually exist. Yeah, and I think like the goal of the film then and the goal of this film now is to make you forget that you're watching visual effects at any given moment. So we use a lot of different techniques. We use animatronics, we use CG dinosaurs, we use uh, you know, maquettes that you could touch and feel, we use motion capture. And so all of these things blend together, I think, in, in a way that hopefully feels seamless and you can stop thinking about that and just enjoy the movie uh, as, as someone watching a bunch of characters uh, that you care about that are in danger. Go back to the first Jurassic Park. Where were you? What were you doing? Uh, I was 16, and I was, I was thinking about girls, and I had a car, and that that was, you know, that was what it was all about at the time. And and then I went into this theater and watched this movie, and I was taken back to a time when I wasn't thinking about that stuff, and I was a little kid, and and that to me uh, was the lesson of Jurassic Park: is there's a value in a great story uh, that can, that can take an audience full of people who are are eight to 80 and turn them all into eight. Now, back then when you saw the original Jurassic Park, was becoming a filmmaker already swimming around in your head? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's what I knew I wanted to do. Uh, and so that was a part of it, is I was, I was already thinking about how they did it and trying to break it, break it apart from a filmmaking standpoint. And, and, uh, and I, I very quickly shed all of that and just started watching it as an audience member. And I encourage everyone to do the same thing. Just, just let, it, let it take you away. Just let it flow, let, let it, it flow. glide, let it ride. Yeah. All right, I gotta ask you this now. I know this is an unfair question to throw your way, okay? But I have to find out. What's your favorite dinosaur and okay. why? Um, my favorite, uh, I like the Ankylosaurus, uh, and it's it's kind of like the turtle with the spikes on its back and the you know the club tail. Uh, and I just like you know it, it's something that is like so vulnerable on the inside. It's got this tiny little head, but it's just it's so badass on the outside. It kind of feels like me. What's the hardest one? I'm not calling myself a badass. No, no, I know, I know. Now, if you had to cite, <laughs> what was one of the hardest, more difficult dinosaurs to bring to life in Jurassic World? Uh, you know. The, the raptors were challenging just because we uh, we wanted each of them to have their own characters this time and, and to to feel like they were living, breathing animals. And then the Indominus Rex, our, our new dinosaur, uh, just because we needed to make it feel like a real dinosaur, but we were making something new and I didn't want it to feel like a sci-fi monster. You know, I wanted it to feel like it was it was on our planet right now. All right, job well done, man. A lot of fun. I, I... Anytime people can bring movies like this to life, thank you. Yeah, My entertainment. Cool. I'm glad you had a good time. Thank you. He's a fan of Jurassic Park. I feel comfortable knowing that it's in the hands of Colin because he is also a fan. There's a responsibility there to make sure that you're delivering something that sticks with the theme that the people who made this franchise would be proud of. Those movies have soul. And if I could aspire to anything in my movies, I want them to have soul. And I think this movie does.